Thank you for joining us for another iDoctor UK video. I'm Ollie, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to replace a broken screen on the iPhone XR. For the link to what I think is the best aftermarket screen available and the tools required to complete the job, check out the description below. Let's get this started by removing the two pentalobe screws in the bottom of the phone that along with the adhesive secure the screen into place. Also, make sure you're using the right screwdriver for this because they are quite easy to round off. Next, take a razor blade and make a small gap between the metal chassis of the phone and the plastic bezel on the screen. Once you've made a small opening, take a guitar pick and insert it into the gap you just made with the razor blade. Then slide it from the bottom along the two long edges and the bottom edge of the phone. That should have cut and loosened the adhesive enough around the edges so that all you need to do is wiggle the screen to loosen the top edge and open it as if you're opening a book backwards. Avoid folding the screen all the way back and potentially damaging the ear speaker flex cable. I use this logic board holder to keep the screen propped up whilst I'm working on it. You can also use an empty mug or something like that to do the same thing. Now that we're inside the phone, take the Y000 tri-wing screwdriver and unscrew these three screws holding the shield down that cover the battery connector. Then move on to the two connectors holding down the LCD and touch connectors. Then finally remove the three tri-wing screws and single Phillips head screw that holds down the front sensor and ear speaker flex. You can now take some tweezers and lift those shields up and put them in a safe place for reassembly later. Next, take a plastic prying tool and disconnect the battery connector to isolate power from the device. You can now safely disconnect the two screen connectors and finally the connector on the ear speaker flex. The screen is now totally disconnected from the logic board and can be lifted away from the phone and as you can see here it took most of the adhesive away with it but if there is some left behind take some tweezers and remove all the leftover black tape from the chassis. It's important not to skip this step because the new seal that you'll install next will not stick properly onto an uneven surface. Once you've removed all the adhesive take some isopropyl alcohol and a small cleaning brush and clean the edge of the chassis to remove any leftover residue from the old seal. A clean toothbrush will do the job here if you don't have one of these brushes. Just make sure it's clean or new and not the brush you cleaned your teeth with this morning. Now take a new seal and carefully line it up with the edges of the phone and place it down. The screen I'm using in this video comes with a new adhesive in the kit and this is a really important step if you want a professional finish. Once the seal is lined up, take the flat end of a plastic spudger and flatten the adhesive down before removing the guide film from the top of the seal with some tweezers. If you want to keep the True Tone function on your device, you really don't want to skip this step. To keep True Tone, you'll need one of these screen programmers. Just connect the old screen to it first and choose Read on the menu. It will copy all the information held in the screen onto the programmer and then you can attach the new screen, choose the option to write in the data and wait for the programmer to do its thing. If you're replacing the screen for personal use, you might be happy to skip the True Tone program in. The device is an additional cost and you probably don't want to fork out on a new machine just for one job. But if you want to sell the phone on in the future, it's important to know that it might reduce the phone's value if it's picked up on. Now we can prepare the new screen for installation, starting by removing this ear speaker and sensor flex from the old screen. Unscrew the single tri-wing screw in the top left and the three Phillips head screws. Then unfold the ear speaker away from the screen. You now need to heat up the adhesive underneath the sensors so they can be removed without damaging them. I use a heat gun for this because I've got one, but you can easily use a hairdryer for this instead. You need to be very careful with these sensors because if they become damaged, they could cause Face ID not to work or cause the phone to boot loop when reconnected. Once the area is warmed up, take some tweezers and carefully lift each sensor away from the back of the screen, starting with the ambient light sensor, then the proximity sensor, and finally the microphone. 
Once they're freed, lift the flex away and keep this part safe, ready to install onto the new screen. To prepare the new screen, first remove any plastic films from the back of the screen. Once the films are removed, take the ear speaker and place the sensors into their corresponding slots. It's important to make sure they sit all the way in because if they're protruding, it will mean the ear speaker won't sit properly and could damage the new screen. Once you're happy with the positioning, reinstall the little metal clip. This can be a bit fiddly, just take your time. It might take a couple of tries to get it in, but it will eventually go back with some concentration. Next, take the ear speaker and refold it over the sensors, then secure the three Phillips head screws and the little tri-wing screw on the left. The screen is now prepared and ready to install. Carefully offer up the screen flexors to the phone and press down on them until you get the click and you will know they're in place. Repeat the same process with the ear speaker flex then secure the flex down with the shield and screws. Remember that the top right hand screw is a Phillips screw and the rest of the screws are all the same size tri-wing screws. Secure down the LCD flexors with the shield and two screws. Then moving down to the bottom, reconnect the battery the same way you did with the screen flexors and install the L-shaped shield and three screws. Be careful when installing the screw closest to the screen flexors because it's very close and can be easily damaged. Do a quick check to make sure that all the screws that you took out have been put back in. Then turn the phone on and test it. If you transferred True Tone over, make sure that it is working properly and the brightness is good. It's also a good idea to check the LCD looks good on both a dark background and a light background. And finally, that touch is fully working. Remove the last layer of film on your dust seal and fold the screen down to close the device. Then starting from the top of the phone, place the screen into place then apply pressure to the edges and the bottom of the screen. Perform a quick visual inspection around all the edges of the phone to make sure the screen is sat flat and properly in place before finally installing the two pentalobe screws back into the bottom of the phone. That completes the repair. Thank you for watching, I hope this guide has helped you and I'll see you next time.